Chacham Rabbi Yudaf Tayyip. One of the legends, one of the Sephardic legends. To speak about him, Mamash, to be speaking about one of the greatest tzaddikim that lived in the past 100 years. Rabbi Yudaf Tayyip, he passed away 76 years ago, give or take. He was such a Chacham, he was such a tzaddik. He fixed the soul of the Mashiach Sheker, the false Messiah called Shabbat Aitzvi, Shem Rishayim Yerkav. He would, he wrote a perush, a commentary on all the work of the Ariya Kadosh called the Etzah Chaim. He wrote a book called Minchat Yehuda, which many people have learned and come back to Hashem because of it. He was, he even has a book that they just revealed, that he had Giluim, revelations of Eliyahu Hanavi, him and his best friend, his Rebbe, his Rebbe and friend, Rabbi Shimon Agassi. What could we say about him? I would like to relate to you one story of how he was born. And this story sheds so much light on the power of not answering back, of not doing revenge. Back in the day, when people used to get married, especially in the Sephardic communities, when a girl would get married, she would move in with her in-laws. And they would get like another daughter. The same thing happened with Rabbi Udaptai's mother. When she was a young woman, she just got married. Her name was Chana. She married her husband, Rabbi Moshe. They got married. They moved into their in-laws. But, like many stories, the mother-in-law wasn't the nicest woman. She found every opportunity to make her daughter-in-law's life miserable. For 20 plus years, she would make her life miserable. And she would always find the smallest things to make a fight between her and her son. And she would silently cry. She would go to her husband and say, I don't know what your mother wants from my life. What does she want from me? And he would say, listen, I have to honor my parents. I can't go against my mother. I know that you're right. What can we do? What can you do? And she would suffer silently for 20 plus years until her mother-in-law passed away. And she breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, so, so, she could, she could have a peaceful and quiet life. The Shiva ends, the seven days of mourning. The Shloishim ends, the 30 days. And her mother-in-law comes to her in a dream. She sees her, she gets afraid. She says, what? You came back to me again? What do you want for my life? Again, you're coming to make my life miserable? She said, no. Now I'm coming for a different reason. They're not letting me inside heaven inside Gan Eden, until I ask for your forgiveness. I know I made your life miserable. I'm here to ask you sorry. I'm here to apologize to you. She was taken aback. After so many years, she would come after her shloishu, after her 30 days, and ask for her forgiveness. So she said to her, of course I forgive you. She said, because you forgave me, I know it wasn't easy. It's 20 years of misery, 20 plus years of misery. I would like to give you a gift. She took out of her pocket a treasure chest. She opens it up and inside was a diamond. She said, this diamond is for you. She takes the diamond and she wakes up. A month later, she finds out that she's pregnant. And the baby that she gave birth to was called an Israel Vikareshemo Bisrael Yehuda. And he's gonna one day become Rabbi Yehuda Ftaya the great Mekubal and Sadiq. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Rabbi Yudaf, what's the power of not answering back? As the Gemara says, Hanelavim ve'inam olevim. One who's put down, but he doesn't put the other one down. Ketzet Hashem He's like the sun shining with all of its might and power. The power of not answering back. It's hard. But yet look at the reward. Rabbi Yudaf Tayyip, when he was a young man, when he was 30 years old, him and his father, Rabbi Moshe, they wrote together a commentary on the Zohar HaKadosh, the Idra Rabbah and the Idra Zuta, which is what the main works of the Ari is on. These two Idarot, they're called. And inside these two Idarot, he wrote a commentary when he was just 30 years old. But he never published it. He said, I'm taking these books with me to the grave. I don't want anyone to learn it. Rabbi Udaftaye, one day decides to do Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, decides to make Aliyah. He makes Aliyah and comes to visit him a tzaddik called Rabbi Avraham Adis. You guys might know his grandson, Rabbi Yaakov Adis, the great tzaddik at the Kotel. 
His grandfathers would be Avraham Adas. He was a, a huge Mikubal, a huge in Yerushalayim. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Rashbi, comes to Rabbi Avraham Adas in a dream and tells him, tomorrow there is a tzaddik that came from Babel, from Iraq. A lion has come from Babylon. I want you to go see him and tell him, how come you're not publishing his, your commentaries that you wrote on my book? I want you to go and tell him this. He wakes up. And so it was. He went the next day with Rabbi Tzion Chazan. They went together to the house of Rabbi Udaftaye. He knocks on the door. He says, Chacham, Chacham, how are you? The Sephardim would never call their rabbis, rabbis. They would say, Chacham. He says, Chacham, come on in. Why would you come all the way here? I would have come to you. Why would you visit me? I would it's not respectful. He says, no, no, no. I came here with a message. He says, Chacham, he tells him. Did you write a commentary when you were 30 years old on the Zohar Kadosh of the Rashbi? He tells him, yes, how do you know? He says, how come you're not publishing it? You don't have money? I'm going to give you money for it. He says, no, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, I have enough money. But how do you know? I'm not going to let you leave this house until you tell me. How do you know that I wrote a commentary on the books of the Rashbi, the Zohar Kadosh? He says, only three entities know that I wrote this commentary. Me, my father, and my creator. How do you know? For 20 years, this commentary, this, my commentary has been in the safe. He didn't want to tell him until he pressed him and he told him Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai himself came to him in a dream and gave him an approbation on his books. He said once the, the Rashbi himself said that my, my commentary was, the, was a right commentary and a true commentary, now I could publish it. And so he did. Until today, one of the most learned books on the Zohar is called the Yain HaRekach of Chacham Yehuda Fetaye. How could we remember this tzaddik? Rabbi Udaftaye, who today is his Yorzeit, the 27th of Av, all of his life had one goal to bring Mashiach. And for this, he brought together a band of people, of tzaddikim, from a certain group of souls that he was able to find out who they were, and they would make a special prayer for the coming of the Mashiach. And Rabbi Udaftaye, he researched and he found out that the reason Mashiach is not here yet, uh, the Goel, Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef, Hashem wants to redeem us, and really our generation is worthy. But Rabbi Yudaftai found out that the reason is because at the time of the Chorban Beis Amigdash Hashemi, God, there was so much negativity in the world that God made a neder. He vowed not to bring Mashiach Tzitkenu until a certain time. And so was revealed to Rabbi Yudaftai. And he made a special prayer to Kiviyachol to nullify the vow of God. So what can we do to remember Rabbi Udaftaye? To pray and to beseech HaKadosh Baruch Hu for the coming of the Goel, which was his whole point of his life. That's the reason why he made a commentary in the Zohar and in the Etzahayim. More about him in later videos. Thank you so much for watching.